conference. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be here today for the first time as your shadow Secretary of State for Justice. This past 12 months, the challenges of our justice system have become all too apparent. The groups and campaign organizations I've met, the prisons, young offenders institutions and courts I've visited, the judiciary and legal professionals I've listened to, and the victims whose experiences I've heard. Take Barry and Margaret Mizzen, who following the tragic and unprovoked murder of their young son Jimmy, have channeled all their energies into working towards a safer community for young people across London through the Jimmy Mizzen Foundation. I'm honored to have Barry advising my policy review. And the probation officer in Preston, with 30 years of experience, who spoke of her frustration and disappointment at seeing several generations of the same family come into conflict with the law. These experiences have shaped my thinking, have reminded me of the progress we made in government, but also highlighted the hard work that still needs to be done. Now, as you know, I shadow the Justice Secretary, Ken Clark. Someone once said to me that a downside of being in the shadow cabinet is that you begin to resemble the cabinet minister you shadow. <laughs> well, so far, I don't wear hush puppies, don't smoke cigars, and manage to stay awake during my leader's speech. <laughs> Ken and I are very different. Unlike Ken, I'm not hopelessly out of touch on the issues of crime and justice. I grew up on a council estate in my South London constituency of Tooting. I know that often victims and criminals live side by side. And I understand how important it is for communities blighted by crime to gain important respite from persistent and serial offenders by the handing down of custodial sentences. Over the past year, some of you may have agreed with the tone and sentiment of Ken Clark's verdict on our justice system, and I admit he can sometimes talk a good talk. After all, who could disagree in principle with a rehabilitation revolution? But conference, do not be hoodwinked. Because of Ken Clark and this government's policies, the Ministry of Justice faces a budget cut of a quarter risking the effective functioning of our justice system. Dedicated, experienced professionals in our prison and probation service face uncertainty about the future of their crucial work. Even his own Chief Inspector of Prisons, Nick Hardwick, said this month he's found no evidence at all of a rehabilitation revolution. However, I'm not going to pretend that had we won the last general election, I wouldn't have made cuts. I would have closed down some courts. We would have introduced a new scheme for contracting solicitors for criminal legal aid. I would have continued Labour's work on payment by results. But let's be clear, not only are the coalition cuts deeper and faster than we would have made, but Ken Clark, along with Theresa May, have simply rolled over to the Treasury without even a whimper. Because of their timidity and complacency, communities up and down the country will pay the price for botched law and order policies. With no, with no strategy for cutting crime, this government's policies on crime and justice are a shambles. The truth is the Tories cannot be trusted on law and order. But, Ken Clark has not only fallen asleep on the job, but he's also dangerously out of touch. Remember his insensitive and offensive comments on rape. On Radio 5, and in response to the statement, rape is rape with respect, 
He said, and I quote, no, it's not. Mr. Clark, let me tell you, rape is rape. On our watch, we prioritise victims of rape. We strengthened the law and consent, trained 500 more specialist rape prosecutors, used the DNA database to enable the police to help de detect offenders, increased investment on centres offering help to victims of rape and sexual assaults. And because of human rights legislation, yes, human rights legislation, rape victims are no longer put through the traumatic experience of being cross-examined in person by their alleged assailants. And, and, and do you remember this government's proposals for a 50% reduction in sentences for early guilty pleas? This would have meant that someone pleading guilty to rape being back on the street after only 15 months. I believe we should all worry that this coalition government threatens to undermine our hard work. You know, this government inherited crime 43% lower than in 1997. You know, we were the first government in history to leave office with crime lower than when we began. Leaving a justice system. <laughs> Leaving a justice system much better resourced, be it at the prison estate, probation services, youth justice, or diversion and rehabilitation policies. More joined up than ever, building the necessary multi-agency cross-government approach to tackling re-offending. Investing in prevention policies like Sure Start, parenting classes, early intervention projects, education, maintenance allowance, and much more. Record numbers of police and community support officers. And yes, being tough on crime and tough on the causes of crime, as relevant in 2011 as when Tony Blair first uttered it in 1993. <laughs> a conference I know all wasn't rosy on our watch. You know, re-offending rates nudge down far too slowly. Too many in our justice system are repeat offenders. The public perceive non-custodial sentences as a soft option. And there's the challenge of moving on from the overly simplistic prison works versus prison doesn't work debate. Of course, society should seek to prevent crime taking place in the first place. That's what we mean by being tough on the causes of crime, recognizing the complex and deep roots of criminality. In government, we drew together agencies to work on improving education, health, housing, employment opportunities, seeking out and eradicating inequality. Sure start through to EMA all now threatened by this government. But it's also about having enough police to catch those who commit criminal acts. Yet under this government, police numbers are falling. Getting prevention right should make the job of the Secretary of State for Justice easier. Less crime and less repeat crime would mean fewer people in our criminal justice system. And that's why we should all pay tribute to a vet and her excellent campaign against reckless police cuts. But conference, we shouldn't forget that we must also punish those that commit crime. That's what we mean by being tough on crime. It's an absolutely fundamental part of any justice system that for those committing serious and violent offences, custody is the only appropriate option. My own background has shown me that we owe it to the communities blighted by crime to give them respite from criminals through custodial sentences. We owe it to the victims to punish criminals, but we also owe it to the communities and victims to prevent offenders drifting back into criminality. And this isn't about being easy on offenders. It's ultimately about making communities safer by preventing offenders from returning to the crime. The National Audit Office estimate that the economic cost of offending by young people alone is 11 billion pounds a year. But the social impacts, blighted communities, frightened residents, victims of crime are huge too. For Labour, we have an economic and a social imperative to reduce crime. It's a win-win. We want to eradicate the economic and social costs, reform offenders, and support communities and victims dealing with the consequences of crime. 
Justice relies on the public having confidence in those in authority holding to account those responsible for criminal actions and victims need conf confidence that they'll be treated properly. And during our time in government, we made progress with victims. We introduced victim impact statements. We increased investment in victim support. We established a victims commissioner and we did much more. Yet all this is in danger of being undone by this government. They've slashed resources to victim support services. Compensation for victims of overseas terrorism, such as those affected by the bombings in Mumbai and Bali, has shamefully yet to materialize. They refused to create the office of chief coroner, a post that would provide an appeal system for families unhappy with a coroner decision on the death of a loved one. They plan to slash the budget of Criminal Injuries Compensation Authority. And you know, by restricting the definition of domestic violence, Ken Clark has removed access to legal aid for some of the most vulnerable women in society, posing a threat to women's safety and that of any children in the family. And in fact, <laughs> and in fact this, this government is cutting legal aid altogether for housing, for debt, for benefits, for employment issues at a time when people need it the most. Advice deserts being created as law centres and CABs closed down. And you know, their changes to no win, no fee cases mean that people like Millie Dowler's family and other victims of wrongdoing by organisations wealthier and more powerful won't be able to be held to be account. I want the Labour Party to build a just system with victims at its heart, giving the public, including victims, the confidence that our just system is on their side. My policy review will be reporting next year on policies to strike the right balance between punishment and reform, setting out what works to protect the public, support victims and stop crime. A conference I am able to announce today that a future Labour government will introduce a new victims law as called for by the Victims Commissioner Louise Casey. It will be enshrined in statute so that the rights of bereaved families of victims and homicide are honoured, delivering effective justice and treating victims with respect and dignity, supporting victims through all stages of the process, including the deeply traumatic experience of when a case reaches court. Under Labour, victims will be at the heart of our just system, and I'll work with victims groups to ensure we get this right. Conference. This summer's riots shows that we need a government that isn't out of touch. Our country deserves better than knockdown justice. We need to make the important decisions on crime and justice at the same time as making tough fiscal choices. But Ken Clark and this government are simply getting these choices wrong. It will be down to us to put it right. There is only one party that can be trusted on law and order, and that's us the Labour Party. Thank you very much.